Hey what's up guys, today, I'll show you a horror comedy film, Fear Inc. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a frantic blonde woman running around a multi-story car park. She hides behind a wall, talking to someone on her phone, insisting that she wants to cancel this thing. But the person on the other line, reminds her that she asked for it. Looking up at one of those parking lot mirrors, she sees a man in a suit and a ski mask, dragging a metal bat behind him, on his way towards her. She runs down the stairs and begs the other person on the line to make it stop. He tells her to hold, and she starts running away again. She reaches the elevator, pressing desperately on the button, while the assailant calmly walks toward her. Before anything can happen, the light goes out. When it comes back on, the assailant is nowhere to be found, and the elevator door opens. We find her again at the rooftop parking, searching for her keys in her bag. She's still wary of her surroundings, but ultimately relieved to have escaped the nightmare she was in earlier. She's distracted when a security guard pops out of nowhere, asking her if she's doing alright. She refuses his help, and explains that she just wants to get in her car. He tells her to report anything strange going on, since his office is close. When she's finally inside her car, the radio comes on. It seems she caught a couple of people mid-conversation, and they sound like they're looking for her. She tries to change the frequency, but it's the same thing on all channels. She hears them talking about her being in her car, which makes her stop. A rope is then wrapped around her neck, and she struggles, while an unknown assailant suffocates her to death. We find Joe, an unemployed horror movie buff, too lazy to do the chores he was tasked to do that day. Instead of being productive, he does the opposite of what's on his list. Lindsay, his girlfriend, catches him just floating around the pool. She reminds him that he promised to help around the place. He tells her not to get pissed, and points out that it's their date night. He takes Lindsay to a haunted maze, but finds that it's not scary enough for him. He comments that he wants to be scared, to the point that he's crying. Some guy pops up next to their table, and leaves Joe a calling card for a company, called Fear Inc. He instructs Joe to call the number, if he ever wants to be scared. On Halloween weekend, Ben, Joe's best friend, and his wife Ashley, arrive at their house, intending to spend some time with them. Ben comments that Joe's living a different life than him, after seeing how fancy Joe and Lindsay are living. That evening, the group enjoys a wild evening. They unwind at the jacuzzi, and talk about their favorite horror movie death scene, from Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Joe maintains that the best is the Red Wedding from Game of Thrones, and refuses to acknowledge that it doesn't count, since it's not a horror, and it's not a movie. He tells them that it's the best out of any movie, and that's saying a lot since he'd seen a lot. Joe then announces that he'll get them more party favors, which means harder stuff. While Joe's away, Lindsay asks the other two if they can hear anything weird. Ben plays stupid, but Ashley tells him to check it out. The noise stops, and Ben turns to the girls to tell them he doesn't see anything. Joe then jumps out of nowhere, wearing a hockey mask and holding a butcher's knife, freaking the rest of the group out. Lindsay complains that Joe's been obsessed with scaring her. Joe then brings up the random guy that approached them from Fear Inc. Ben remembers something after he hears about the custom scare thing, and realizes that it's probably what his boss did. He asks Ben about it, and he recounts how a lot of people say it's horrible, and tries to talk Joe out of it. He claims that the company's not entirely legit, and preys on people who think they need something more intense, and uses it as an opportunity to fulfill their twisted fantasies. Joe doesn't think it's real, and laughs it off. Ben asserts that it can get intense, sharing that his boss got chased in a parking garage, and hasn't been back to work since. It seems the blonde woman being hunted from earlier, was Ben's boss. After leaving Ben and Ashley, Lindsay takes a bath, while Joe waits for her to finish in their room. He finds his missing phone and wallet on the nightstand, the Fear Inc's card on top. Unable to ignore it, especially after Ben's story, Joe calls the number. He has a weird conversation with the man on the other line, who seems to be speaking with Joe and someone else. He tries to ask for more information, but the man tells him that they're all sold out, and then hangs up. Ben and Ashley retire inside, after Ashley accidentally breaks one of the wine glasses. While things are getting intimate, a cloaked figure with a mask on, can be seen in the background, watching them. Joe interrupts the two by entering from the side door, and catching them in an intimate position. He was worried something happened, after hearing the crash from when Ashley broke the wine glass. As they're talking and things get awkward, the cloaked figure is gone, and the main door is ajar. While the group's hanging out by the pool the next day, someone's knocking and ringing their doorbell. It's Joe's neighbor, who wanted to inform Joe that he spotted someone on the property. He brushes off the neighbor's warning, and tells him that it's probably nothing before closing the door. On his way back to the pool, something sets off the house alarm. He hears movement, and warns whoever it is, that the cops are on their way. He checks the house further, grabbing a golf club as a weapon. He finds a warning in the sauna, which seems to be written in blood. It reads, it begins your life ends. Turning around, a crazy man attacks him from out of nowhere, covers his mouth, and starts chanting the nursery rhyme from the three little pigs. The cops arrive, but Lindsay and the others confirm that they saw no one in the house. One of the cops is skeptical, since people are home and it's broad daylight. Crimes don't usually occur at this hour. 
This sets off Joe, who's angry that the cops are dismissing what happened. However, with no lead and nothing taken from the house, they tell the group to inform them if anything else happens, then they leave. After a night of partying, the group gets back in the house and gathers in the kitchen. While everyone is drinking their water, the television mysteriously turns onto the news channel. The reporter looks to be in front of Joe's house, and is reporting that Joe killed Ben, Ashley, Lindsay, and Joe's neighbor. The television turns off, and Lindsay is livid, thinking it's another one of Joe's pranks. Ben announces that no one is outside their home, so it couldn't be live. They ask Joe how he did it, and he realizes that it must be Fear, Inc., confessing that he called them. While they're talking, someone cuts the power. Everyone's getting scared except Joe, who's extremely excited. He offers to fix the breakers when he hears his neighbor calling for him. He steps outside and sees the old man running up to him. The neighbor tells him that someone else is on the property, when a cloaked figure walks up to the neighbor from behind and stabs him in the chest. Joe doesn't take it seriously, clapping his hand and exclaiming that it's awesome. He runs back inside and delightedly explains that they barrymore the neighbor, referring to how Drew Barrymore died in the Scream movie. The group begs for Joe to cancel the game, which he reluctantly tries, but gets a busy signal, so he convinces them to go along with it in the meantime. Tired of Joe's annex, Ben tells them that he's calling the police instead. They're instructed to lock the doors and the windows, which the group does except for Joe, who leaves the door to the garage ajar. The group tries to escape using Joe's car, but they find that his car has been sabotaged. Lindsay suggests they go to their neighbors. As they try to run away, they come across two more cloaked figures and are forced back inside the house. They hide in the bedroom and quickly realize that Ashley got left behind. Ben freaks out and demands the other two to let him out, so he can go back for her. As Ben leaves, Joe argues with Lindsay that it's a game, and going out will be the best chance for them to win, since hiding in the bedroom is just them waiting to be found and killed. He successfully convinces Lindsay to leave. They get to the backyard, where they find Ashley pinned to a tree, with an arrow through her left eye socket and another one on her left leg. Ashley warns them that the man is close, and they run back inside the house. One of the cloaked figures follows Joe and Lindsay inside, easily opening the door, since it's the one that Joe had left ajar earlier. Joe asks for a timeout, while instructing Lindsay to get their bat in the bedroom. The man walks up to Joe, throws him down the floor, and knocks him out with the butt of the axe. Joe wakes up to find Ben gagged and strapped to a chair next to a table, filled with torture contraptions reminiscent of what Jigsaw does in the soft films. The television turns on, and one of the cloaked figures instructs Joe to cut off Ben's left hand, or Lindsay will die. Joe thinks it's still a game, and chooses to cut off Ben's left hand. He finds out the hand he had cut off is fake, which reinforces the idea that it's all just a game. He's told that the key to his freedom lies within Ben, which he realizes means that they hid the key in Ben's chest. So Joe cuts Ben's chest open, but is unable to find the key inside. He discovers that the blood pouring out of Ben's body is real. This makes Joe question what's happening, as Ben loses consciousness in front of him. The lights switch off for a moment, and when it comes back on, Ben's gone. Joe hears Lindsay's screams and rushes to help her. He arrives in the room and finds Lindsay unconscious, but alive. He grabs his phone to call the cops one more time. While on the call, he's attacked by one of the cloaked figures. Fortunately, Joe defends himself by strangling and killing him. He grabs his phone to let the emergency operator know what he's done. Lindsay stands up and unties herself from the bed, as she overhears Joe telling the operator that the man is dead. She tells Joe to hang up. Joe asks Lindsay what's going on. Lindsay explains that everything's a game as he thought, and that Ashley and Ben are alive. The couple comes back inside, and Lindsay informs them that Joe accidentally killed one of the men. As they're arguing, Ben decides that he and Ashley would leave, since those behind Fear Inc. are seriously dangerous, and they have a family to think about. As they're figuring out the next step, Joe tells his girlfriend that he'll take the fall, and will leave the rest of the group out of his story. Lindsay explains that it's not that simple, and the company wouldn't let them get away from killing one of them. She suggests they dump the body in the desert and play innocent when they look for him. With no choice, Joe goes with her plan. Since the company sabotaged Joe's car, the couple steal the van belonging to the company instead. They hide the body inside, as well as stash shovels they'll be using when they get there. On their way to the desert, Lindsay finds a folder, filled with information about them that the company has collected. It seems they've been researching the couple for weeks now. At the intersection, while waiting for the light to change, Joe is overly suspicious of the car next to them, and claims that it's them. Lindsay calmly tells him to just ignore the group, and keep his eyes straight ahead. As the light changes, those in the other car cheer up, while one of them throws a drink on the van's windshield before speeding off. The couple is relieved that it was just some random teenagers and not Fear Inc. Back on the road, they're instructed to pull over by a sheriff, since Joe was speeding. Joe hands over the car's registration, but is unable to produce any license. This is unusual for the sheriff, since Lindsay told him that they're rushing to catch a flight. 
The sheriff leaves them for a moment to check on the car's registration. While Joe panics, thinking that the man is in on the game, Lindsay attempts to calm him down. When the sheriff comes back, he inquires about the name of the company and why Joe is driving their van to the airport. After making an excuse about borrowing the van from his brother who owns the company, Joe realizes that the sheriff had called him by his name when he never mentioned it and didn't hand over any identification. Since Joe is agitated, the sheriff asks him to take a step out of the vehicle when another van comes out of nowhere and hits the sheriff. In all the chaos, Lindsay orders Joe to go, and they drive away. They reach their destination and proceed to dig a hole big enough to fit the body. They hear a vehicle approaching, and the two hide behind the bushes. The leader of the company calls for Joe. He announces that he'll make him a deal and will let his girlfriend live if he comes out. Before Joe can surrender himself, they're found by the leader's crew and dragged back to where the couple were planning to bury the dead body. After checking on the man's pulse, the leader tells Joe that he killed a man with a wife and a daughter. Joe tries to explain that he didn't mean it, but the leader refuses to listen further. He has the couple bound and gagged. He tells Joe that he took his friend's last breath, so they'll take hers, meaning Lindsay. He hears a struggle ensue, then a gun going off. The group drives off after and leaves Joe behind as he cries and calls for his girlfriend. Joe gets out his bindings and finds his girlfriend's body inside the hole they had dug. In a daze, he walks to an abandoned diner where he tries to call 911 again. This time, it's Lindsay who answers. She's sitting on the other side of the diner. In his relief, Joe rushes to hug her. Lindsay discloses that it was all part of the game, and their friends were all in it. The leader and the rest of the Fear Inc. crew arrive with Ben and Ashley to celebrate Joe surviving the game. While drinking, Ben admits to Joe that the group is truly dangerous and is grateful that nobody got hurt. The Fear Inc. crew then surrounds the four, and Joe exclaims he knows the scene from somewhere. Suddenly, one of them snaps Ben's neck, another shoots Ashley in the head, while another slits Lindsay's throat. Before the leader kills Joe, he tells him that he can't let him leave, without experiencing his all-time favorite death scene, referring to the scene from the Red Wedding in Game of Thrones. He then slits Joe's throat. The movie ends with the phone ringing and one of the Fear Inc. operators answering the phone. He tells the person on the other line that their service is sold out. He then announces to the rest of the crew that they've got another customer. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.